When I took a break from ministry to stay home with my small children, I met Maris. Maris was a transplant from Birmingham, Alabama, new to the area as I was. And she quickly became like a sister to me. We had playdates several times a week and watched each other's children. We'd get together on Friday night, put all the kids to sleep in a big bed upstairs and tell stories and laugh until the wee hours of the morning. We cooked meals for each other and shared truckloads of mulch and volunteered at the school together. We sang in the local choir and hosted block parties as partners. The year Maris adopted two more children from Russia, however, things began to change. The adoption had gone much faster than expected, and the children were a bit older as well. So when all was said and done, Maris and her husband suddenly had four children with them between the ages of three and five. Parenting became much more demanding. Maris and her husband had no close relatives nearby, and it was harder and harder to find the bandwidth to hold their family together. I guess I should have seen the writing on the wall, but I was shocked when Maris told me that they would be moving back to Birmingham to be near family. There were so many things that I had a assumed would always be there for me, and they included Maris. It was hard to imagine school life or the neighborhood without her. I wondered if it were a sign that I should leave too. I felt sad and abandoned, as if she preferred her family to me, which really didn't make any sense. I knew that she loved me, and it wasn't that kind of choice. I didn't say any of these things to Maris because I didn't want to hurt her or make it harder for her to go. I silently mourned her departure and all that she meant to me. But on her last day, as we sat outside on my patio, it all came out how hard it was for her to leave, how much she loved me and her life in Connecticut and that she needed the stability of her family, and that's why she had to move. We cried as we shared about how God had given us to one another and our sadness at the end of this special time in our lives. We laughed through our tears as we remembered the gifts of our friendship, the birthday parties and crazy cakes and walks through the snow, and conversations during swim lessons. It was hard to say goodbye. But it was good to talk about all the things we were grateful for. Sharing our sadness with one another lifted the load and brought an unexpected lightness to our hearts. Blessed are those who mourn For they shall be comforted, Jesus said. Blessed can also be translated as happy. We don't usually think of mourning as being a happy state. In fact, it's something we'd like to avoid as often as possible. If we could hold on to those we love forever, we absolutely would. Sometimes we just want to know when the pain of grief will end. But when I think of that last day with Maris, I think I understand something of what Jesus was getting at in his famous statement from the Sermon on the Mount. It was a hard day, saying goodbye to Maris and all she represented to me. But it was also a good day, because we acknowledged openly the gifts that God had given to us through one another. We were happy to remember all those gifts and to give thanks for them one by one. We were indeed blessed. 
It's been over 60 years since the groundbreaking book, Good Grief, by Granger Westberg was published. In it, he outlined 10 stages in the grieving process, a first in the understanding of the dynamics of loss. Later, Elizabeth Kubler-Ross summarized the experience in five, denial, anger, bargaining, depression, acceptance. Whatever analytics you choose, grief is a journey that you move through at your own pace, cycling through different emotions, revisiting them. Throughout, however, there are moments of grace. Mourning loss causes one to reflect on things that we might otherwise take for granted. It gives us an opportunity to say the things that are most important. I love you, I forgive you, and thank you. And so, in the end, grief can be good. Like Maris and I remembering our times together, grieving can be a time for support and a litany of blessing. Today is All Saints Day, the day in the church year where we remember our dead and give thanks for their lives and return again to the promise of the resurrection. We lift up names today of people that we love who have died in the past year, as well as those we continue to love and miss who died longer ago. It is indeed a time of mourning when we feel deep loss of our loved ones. But it is also a day of deep gratitude and blessing. Because as Christians, we do not believe that death is the end. Not of our relationship with those we love and not of our relationship with God. We believe that we are still connected to those we love in the communion of saints, that community of believers from every time and every place. We confess it each week in the Apostles' Creed. And when we gather at the altar for Holy Communion, we gather with the saints of every time and every place, including our beloved dead. And we sing with them the eternal song that they sing all the time around the throne of God. In this meal, we have a foretaste of that feast that's already going on. We are sustained and strengthened and connected with that great reunion of all the beloved right here in the bread and in the wine. I once met a hospice worker on the elevator at the hospital who confided in me that people would often say that her job must be so sad dealing with dying people. And she said to me that she wouldn't trade her work for anything in the world because working with the dying and their families brought such meaning to her life and it brought meaning to theirs. Blessing and mourning were a side, two sides of the same coin. Jesus said, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Not comfort someday in the great by and by, but comfort now, fortitude now, consolation now. Blessing and happen, happiness are not in some far off, unreachable place, but right here in the midst of pain and confusion in our lives. Right here in the promises of Jesus. 
right here in the table of our Lord. Amen.